welcome to another episode of Lucy's Quick One. I got you with all the news. Let's go. <sighs> My heart goes out to Davido and his team. Now, Davido lost his age during the week. His name was Habib Utman. Well, he was mostly known as Obama DMW. Now, reports revealed that Obama was complaining of, or he said he had um, difficulty breathing, and then he drove himself to the hospital. But unfortunately, a few hours later, he was pronounced dead now a lot of people came out to send their condolences to the family to the team and all of that we had tiwa savage perizzi coco by chloe and even at some points perizzi shared a screenshot saying that you know what i am done with alcohol i am done with cigarettes you know when it comes to death death has a way of humbling people it just has a way of reminding people that you see this life just live right and just, just be good because at the end of the day it all ends like all these things that we are running and doing and all of that just ends because even personally i got the news of somebody sad news of somebody dear to me and i know the whole feeling and all of that but it just tends to remind you to just to just live right may their souls rest in peace Amen. You know, the online voter registration has started. Like, INEC announced the whole thing from June 28th, and it has started. Now, the first day for the continuous voter registration, INEC came out to reveal that close to or more than 42,000 people had already registered, you know, applied for the voter card. For those, some of them were even new for new voters, and then some people who had either one issue or the other with their voter's card, or who even wanted to collect their permanent voter's card. And the list just kept on growing and growing with the days. So, just in case you've not got your voter's card, people of God, my people, please do make sure that you get your voter's card. You know, for all of you who are complaining and saying, you know, I wasn't, I'm not yet of age, I was underage then, by now I'm sure that you've grown. Mm -hmm. Please make sure you get your voter's card. You start by pre-registering online, you go to the website at INEC, and then you go ahead to get your voter's card. It's so easy. We have to get this right, okay? <sighs> okay. All right, so the Big Brother Niger reunion continued. And of course, I have for you again for this week, my five highlights. And I'm starting with the very first one. Well, the, the one that was everybody's favorite. The one that everybody expected a lot from. But at the end of the day, we didn't really get what we were looking for. Erica made her face known on the show. Erica and Nico had a conversation. And then there's questions about Erica and asked the, you know, Ibuka asked Erica and said, you know, what do you feel about this entire situation and what led to your disqualification? And then she had something to say about it. And then Lecon, who was asked some questions about the whole situation with Erica, and they also had something to say about it. Take a look. Like, we only knew each other for like two months, right? Only in my 27 years of living, I only knew him for two months, so it's not, it's not relevant. And as I look at him, I still feel very stupid for ever saying that he's the best, he's, the, he's like my best friend in the house and the person that had my back and all of that. Yeah, yeah, what happened could have been avoided. What happened could be mended, should be mended, would probably be mended at a point. Uh, so... Lecon also during the show was asked, so why haven't you apologized to Erica? Because Erica was like, you know what, in the same WhatsApp group, he has never called me, he has never made a move and all of that. And then Lecon was like, you know what, I haven't made a move to Erica to call her or to say anything because right now, I don't know what kind of reception I'll be getting from her if I had made a move. And, well, people did agree with Lecon, including me. I think that right now, the storm is still very weary and still very, very high. So, it's best that everybody just calms down and then look for the best time to actually address the situation. Because looking at the conversation from Lecon and Erica, it looks like tension is still on the high. Then moving on to the second highlights, there was the Ozo, Prince, and Nengi conversation. I remember <laughs> the whole triangle. Now, Ibuka asked questions about what led to that famous outburst about Ozo. Like, 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 <laughs> there you go. Now, before this outburst, there was the Prince and Nengi situation. Nengi was closer to Prince at that point in time, even closer than she was with Ozo. And then if people were like, you know, this outburst was basically because um Ozo was feeling some kind of way with the whole Prince and Nengi situation. And then Ozo was like, no, that's not true. But the interesting thing was how the housemates kept on saying that they believed that the reason Ozo went all out that way was because of Nengi and because he was feeling some kind of way with the way Nengi and Prince were close. Now, 
Nengi definitely said she didn't believe that that was the reason as well and also also disputed that fact but Prince also came out to say you know what I believe that was the reason also came out to do and he came out to shout the way he did now you know some for some men let's bring it down home for some men you know there's a way you feel when you're trying to get a girl and then it looks like a particular guy is the only barrier between you and that girl there's a way you'd react you know what I'm saying mm? that was what happened the third highlight for me would be Prince versus the entire houseways. Now, basically, Prince was called a competitive being. They said that, you know, the way he was in the house he was extremely competitive and that they felt that at some point also, um, Prince was a threat. And when Prince was asked, how do you feel about, you know, the housemates seeing you this way? Prince was like, you know what? I came into the house to compete. I didn't come into the house to come and play. And, and hence, that's the reason why I was the way I was. But the housemate kept on complaining and saying that there was a way he reacted whenever he lost a game or whenever he lost anything. And well, I, to be honest, I just feel that that was Prince's strategy. And when reading the comments of people talking about Prince, some people were like, you know, he overdid it. And then we had some other people who were like, you know what? I think that Prince was right to have been the way he was in the house. Now, the fourth highlight was between Neo and Prince. Apparently, Neo and Prince had a very good relationship from the beginning of the show. But apparently, at some point, Neo and Prince had like a strange relationship. So, Ebuka came out to ask, what would have been responsible for this? And he used to complain a lot about me in the diary session. And he said something in the diary, in the diary room, which I felt really offended. And he said I lied about my father. That was one time. And then Neil was asked, okay, what do you what do you think about this whole situation? Do you think you were responsible? Do you try to, you know, apologize? And Neil came out and said, you know what? I he was trying to cover the whole thing at first. And then he came out to say, I apologize. I tried to apologize to him, but I couldn't get through to him and all of that. And then people, the housemates just kept on stating in agreement that they felt that at that point in time Neil should have apologized to Prince saying that he didn't mean it that way about his father and all of that. Even V, our label label, came out to say that she thought or she agreed with the fact that Neil should have apologized to Prince. Now my fifth and my favorite highlight for the reunion for this week would be Ebuka's words of wisdom to the diehard fans. Like, you people are very, very stubborn. <laughs> you know you like to hear what. Like, Ebuka just had something to say. Take a look. And I understand the love and the passion you have for the housemates, but I will never understand why we need to get to the point where, you know, hate is what sort of is almost seen as the theme of this show. It breaks my heart. I think it's a, big, a bit of a disservice to what people like these housemates bring to the show when you see comments like, oh, Big Brother fans are so toxic. Because I think we're a bit more than that. <sighs> Nigerians can be stubborn, but at the end of the day, it's all crude. Just in case you saw the story and you're wondering, what is this about? Well, first of all, I would say that Nigerians are a lot calmer now that the whole situation is like doused. But the beginning of the whole thing, people were like, what's going on? Now, during the week, Tampan, that's the theater at Movie Practitioners Association of Nigeria, came out to say that um, Yabo Oju, actresses Yabo Oju and Nkechi Blessing have been banned from the association, saying that no movie director, no movie producer should call these ladies for any job when it comes to the industry. And people were like, what's going on? And then Tampa came out to say that they did this because these ladies have kind of like disrespected the association. That utterances from the likes of Yabo Ujo, Nkechi Blessing and others are regarded as unfortunate words spoken by people who should know better as they have benefited immensely from what the association and industry stands for. Immediately this was made known, there was reactions. First of all, Yabojo came out to say that she refused to be silenced and she's talking for justice and speaking for justice. Then Nkechi Blessing came out to say, you know what, I need to understand what's the motive behind this suspension because I feel that people are just trying to attack me. Then we had the fans. The fans also came out and they were like, we don't understand what's going on. They even had some colleagues in the Yoruba movie industry coming out to say that, you know, they don't understand what's going on here because not just 
Yabo Ojo and Nkechi Blessing have been vocal when it comes to this Baba Ejesha issue. But we've also had a lot of colleagues who have come out to say a lot of things about this whole issue and the conversation just went back and forth. But before we knew what was happening, because of the attack and because of the heated argument, um, Jide Kusoko, that's one of the leaders of Tampan, came out again to say something, like more of to make a clarification. The conference was not about Baba Ejesha. There was no time we said what Yabo Ojo is doing about fighting for the girl is wrong. We never said so. What we are saying is this, that Yabo Ojo should desist from mentioning Tampan and the Yoruba film industry in a derogatory way. You know, when things like this just happen, I just stare and just look at the way the conversation just goes back and forth because at the end of the day Yabo Ojo comes out to apologize to the association saying that she was wrong to have you know said some derogatory things about the association as a whole but she still stands for justice she basically says I, I'm still standing for uh the 14 year old girl I'm still standing for justice and all of that and then she went on to also apologize on behalf of Inkechi Blessing for any derogatory statement that she would have made and the fans came out to just say you know what let this just end and let us leave enjoy peace and harmony but the reason i love yabo ojo is the fact that she stands for what she believes in because at the end of our apology on our instagram page she still came out to use the hashtag justice must be served and to talk about justice being served we are still waiting to see what happens to babai jesha at the end of the day but this whole drama has helped people who want to be want to become actors to understand the things that happen in the industry both for the yoruba speaking people and for the english speaking people let me know what you think about the story in the comment section. When you hear, okay, <laughs> okay, Shama B is pregnant. Cardi B came out to review during the week that she is expecting her second baby. But she made this known at the BET Awards. And the way Cardi just comes out to reveal her, her babies. You know, remember the time for culture, how she came out and she revealed that she was pregnant and did, did the same thing for her second child. Well, Cardi has always said well, she will always wanted more than one child. Well, congratulations to her. And still talking about congratulations. Congratulations to Borna Boy. He won an award during the BET Awards as well. Best International Act. I would say Borna Boy is just going on steady on the low and i wish you all the best guys that's it for this week's episode of lucy's quick one i hope you were able to enjoy the conversation don't forget to drop your comments in the comment section and of course subscribe share like stay safe people live well i love you